Hey there, everybody. Welcome again to the Michigan Trails Report. I am your host, Tom Funk, author of 50 Hikes of Michigan's Upper Peninsula, 50 Hikes on the North Country Trail, and, uh, you know, general dude that you see, you know, on these hiking forums. Thanks again for joining us. It is somewhere in March, week of the 20th. And, uh, yeah, it's time to talk some more trails. Again, our sponsor is Gateway to Pitcher Rocks Lodge up in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. They have a lodge that has three bedrooms and two bathrooms, and they're centrally located in the eastern half of the UP. Check them out, vrbo.com, backslash 980761. All right, well, I thought I'd do something a little different this week and uh, tell you a little story that I've been promising to tell you for several months now. I thought I'd do that this week because winter's coming to an end. Spring has just started, which is great, but the weather's crappy. The trails are in terrible condition. There's still snow on the ground up north. Uh, You know, spring break is coming up, and uh, I've owed you this story about uh, uh, from my outfitting days working in uh, the Michigan's Upper Peninsula. You may recall I mentioned uh, a couple of folks that wandered into uh, Cabela's when I was working part-time there. Back in the day, um, and I worked there in my off season, basically November through April. And one year I worked early into June before transplanting myself to the Upper Peninsula. And on my very last day before my leave started, about an hour before we closed, a young couple rolled in and needed to buy some backpacking equipment. The gentleman said he needed a backpack and uh, he needed to fill in some gaps with some equipment. And, uh, you know, that neither one of them had owned. And he really didn't have a list, and I was able to pry out of him uh, uh, information, and I found out that uh, this would be their first backpacking trip. So I ask, where are you going? Isle Royal, he answers. I then ask, when are you going? He says, in a couple weeks. Have you purchased your tickets yet? And I get this puzzled look from the young man. Tickets? Yeah, ferry tickets, I say. You mean a boat? And he's looking at his girlfriend. And they look at each other. And uh, she says, why do we need a boat ride? So now I'm puzzled. This chap and his girlfriend didn't seem all there, if you know what I mean. And doesn't he know that Isle Royale is an island? So I say to him, how about I pull out a map and uh, you show me what you're thinking of doing? Because I'm not entirely sure that he's really going to Isle Royale. Maybe he's just going up north. So I pull out a gadget here and I open it up and uh, showed him uh, where Isle Royale was. And <laughs> you should have seen the looks on their faces. Isle Royale is in Houghton, he says. What's this, he says, pointing at this island in the middle of uh, the world's largest freshwater lake. Isle Royale is an island, I say. Houghton is on the mainland, and I flip a page to show Houghton on the mainland. That's where their headquarters is. And at that point, knowing if these two were to pursue hiking in a place they have no clue about, no clue how to get there, that where they're going is an island, I, and I was just afraid that I was going to read about them in a newspaper um, when they would find their carcasses. Can I be perfectly honest with you, I say? Can I suggest going someplace a little easier and a bit closer to civilization? And I also recommended a break-in hike to them. And when they left, I felt confident they were not going to drive to Isle Royal. So let's flash forward three weeks. I'm up north doing my thing, taking calls, and I get a call from a gentleman about arranging a shuttle ride from Munising to Tequamanon Falls State Park. I quote him a price, and he proceeds to barter with me that you know he doesn't have a credit card, and I didn't accept cash payments day of. So we work out an arrangement where I'd notify this chap if I was already going to be in Munising and head towards Tequamanon, and he could be a cash customer at that point. So this situation did arise, and we did make these arrangements. So the day of the pickup came, and yep, you guessed it, it was this chap and his girlfriend, the same ones I had customers in Cabela's a few weeks before. 
So we say our hidey hoes and kind of laugh about the situation that we had already previously met. And uh, he puts all of their stuff in the back of the van, and off we go. And we arrive at Taquamanon Falls State Park, and we proceed to unload. So he opens up, we, well, I open up the trunk, and then he goes into the back. And now keep in mind that when I'm shuttling, I would actually load packs into the back because usually there are multiple customers, and I usually do it for them as a courtesy, but I didn't do it for this guy. Well, to my surprise, he pulls out of the back of the van not one but two cast iron pans, several spatulas, an umbrella, about 30 pounds in canned goods, not one but two oven mitts. It looked like a flea market that afternoon into Quamanon spread out on the lawn. I'm standing there speechless. Then he pulls out this brand new Cabela's backpack that he bought for me. And inside of that, he pulls out this giant machete. And then all this aluminum tubing and a bag of hardware, which was kind of I'm like, what is that all about? So I ask him, what pretty tell is all this about? Well, he brought the fixings of an aluminum backpacking frame for his girlfriend. His idea was to lash her three bags. She had like a day pack and a couple small bags. He was going to lash these to this frame that he was going to put together right there in the parking lot. All right, fair enough. Problem was he had no hip hip belt for this thing. I point this out. He takes off his belt that's around his waist and attaches it to the frame. (laughs) At that point... I just cannot take it anymore. Sir, that thing's going to wear a hole in her hips in about an hour. And he proceeds to pull out a couple of, of uh, um, uh, pieces of tape and wraps them around the belt. And and they didn't even have a map. So I actually, feeling sorry for this guy as he was putting this pack together, I went and found him one and brought it back. And uh, just to be safe... I brought a compass as well because I'm glad I did because he pulls out this this ancient military GPS that looked like it was from a spaceship and clearly did not work properly. And I actually had to teach this guy, who I found out later, he was actually in the Navy, how to use a map, how to use a compass, and how to find this flipping trail. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, this guy's going to die. He's, he's going to wander in the woods. I'm never going to hear from him again. So I'm like, okay, here's here's some places to camp, um, you know, and he, he reminded me that, hey, you have this company policy, don't you, of free rescues, which I did. So basically if a customer got, got in some sort of pickle, I went and got him, no questions asked, and didn't charge him anything. So, yes, I said, if you get into a pinch, please get a hold of me. Now, keep in mind the cell phone coverage up in that area is terrible, so I, I didn't expect to hear anything. Well, anyways, they went off into the woods. And I go and I carry on my business. The next morning, I know, right? <laughs> what does this end? My phone blows up with text messages from these two hipster doofuses. I call my driver at Taquama, as I was somewhere else at the time, and he says he found them in the park, Taquama Falls State Park, where they started the day before, exactly where I dropped them off yesterday. In the course of my day, I eventually made it over there. Walk up to these two, and I, I ask, what happened? Oh, dude, we made it to that campsite on the Little Two Hearted River? And I'm like, well, great, that, that's awesome. Why'd you turn around and come back? He says, we couldn't drink the water. Well, why? Your filter wouldn't work? What, what, what happened? No, he says, because the water is polluted. Polluted? I ask. It's not polluted. He says, yeah, it's brown. So here's my chance to do some uh, education. And I proceeded to tell him that the river is a blue ribbon trout stream and why the water is brown is because of the tannic acid that is the water and it is not pollution. It's the same stuff that makes your tea brown. So I'm looking at these guys. This poor girl has got this terrible rickety thing on her, you know, that she's been carrying around. And, uh, you know, they just wanted to go back to Munising, which, okay, fine. I'm, I'm going to take you guys back to Munising, which wasn't, um, it was about 30 miles past where I was uh, headquartered anyway. So I'm like, I, I got to get rid of these guys. So we all hop in, and we're heading on our way. We're not even to Newberry, and uh, he asks if I can drop him off in Grand Marais. I'm like, 
okay, Grand Marais, that's cool. What's in Grand Marais? He goes, yeah, the music festival. I'm like, do you mean the music festival takes place in August, two months from now? He goes, well, anyways, that's where we want to go, he says. I'm like, okay, all right. Their intention was to uh, hike uh, from Grand Marais to back to Musing to their car. They, they still wanted to make a go of this backpacking trip. So by going to, from Tequamanon to uh, Grand Marais, they cut off about uh, 70 miles. So I tell them, okay, guys, here is the deal. I'm going to drop you off in Grand Marais. You can hike back to your car from there. If you run into any trouble, you guys are on your own. No phone, don't call me, don't text me. You can hitch a ride up here, no problem. It's easy to do, and the locals are going to help you out. Guys, I have spent way too much time and money on your adventure. So this is where we're going to part ways, where I drop you off in Grand Marais. So this guy asked me, well, what about our stuff? The stuff you kept from us, from carrying with us when we were at your uh, at your place, you know, or when we when we first arrived, and I'm like, oh crap, it was it was I brought the stuff back to my my outfitting headquarters. I'm like, oh god, I thought I was gonna get rid of these people. So I'm like, yeah, okay, here's my address. I will leave it in a box in the foyer. So just show up when you're done and grab your stuff and go. So I dropped them off and. A couple of days later, they uh, picked up their stuff and left me a note. And I'm like, two days, there's no way they uh, hiked 45 miles in two days. But what they did, they wrote me a little note and said they hiked to Log Slide and then hitched a ride to Munising. So of the 100 miles they wanted to hike, they hiked a grand total of about 12 over a 10-day time period. This is what happens when you don't practice leave no tra- trace principle number one. This is a classic example of plan and prepare. So there you go. That is just one of many of my outfitting stories that I have running my outfitting business in the Upper Peninsula and Lower Peninsula. So hey guys, I remember to check out TomFunk.net to sign up for the YouTube channel, the Substack, all that good stuff. And thanks to my sponsor, Gateway to Pictured Rocks. And uh, we will uh, do this in about a week. And thanks for listening and uh, hopefully you enjoyed that uh, bonus content. Thanks again, Tom Funk. And we will see you next week.